The world record for fastest coming out goes to Ellen DeGeneres, who in her 1997 special managed to run through every phase of the coming out process in exactly four days. This two-parter hits so many milestones so fast, it's like running a marathon. So take a deep breath, limber up, and get ready to race. Of course, the show had been hinting that Ellen was a lesbian for weeks before the episode aired. Actually, years, if you knew what to look for. I feel pretty, you're so pretty. I feel pretty and witty and hey. But enough pussyfooting around. Things came to a head on the puppy episode, so named because one executive suggested that instead of having a romantic life, Ellen's character could get a puppy instead. Not sure why she couldn't do both, but anyway, the episode starts subtly enough. Ellen, are you coming out or not? <laughs> yeah, Ellen, quit jerking us around and come out already! <laughs> what is the big deal? I've got a whole hour. <laughs> You can think of this as just before the starting line, step zero, because it's where most queers are before their coming out process begins. Oh, I'm in a closet, I know what I need to do, but I just want to put it off and not deal with it. Personally, I spent years in that holding pattern, convinced that I'd become interested in girls eventually. But from the start of this episode, it is only two minutes before Ellen sprints to step one of her coming out process, discovering lesbian rapport. You've got a little eyelash right oh. here. You can make a wish. Okay. Would you like some coffee? That was it. That's amazing. <laughs> this is adorable. Someone please use this move on me. Ellen has a problem now. She likes Susan, but she's not ready to be a lesbian. You, uh, you know, it's not enough for you to be gay. You know, you've got to recruit others, you know. <laughs> hey, I'll have to call national headquarters and tell them I lost you. <laughs> Damn, just one more and I would have gotten that toaster oven. <laughs> What, what is that, gay humor? Because <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> We're now 10 minutes in, and Ellen has raced straight ahead to step two of coming out, trying to be straight. I'll show you who's gay. Mm. Oh, men, 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 why do I love men so much? Girl, I heard that. Okay, Ellen's trying to straighten herself out. This is a phase that so many queers go through, and it can last years. Fortunately, on this episode, it lasts approximately four minutes and eight seconds. Ellen is soon telling her therapist the truth that she has zoomed ahead to step three, having a crush. Has there ever been anyone you felt you clicked with? And what was his name? Susan. <laughs> and that's also step four, admitting to yourself that you're gay. Ellen's out. Kind of. She's told Oprah, but of course the information still isn't public. It's protected by patient Oprah confidentiality. She's going to have to sprint through step five, confiding in someone you trust. Building up the nerve to do that can be an exhausting, laborious process. But fortunately, in the case of this episode, it's just five minutes, plus commercial break. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I did get the joke about the toaster oven. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that means... I'm gay. Imagine how satisfying it would be if we still lived in a world where you could get screams and cheers for saying these words. Or if, as soon as you came out, this happened. Hi, I'm Melissa Etheridge, and I'd like to sing my friend Ellen here a song. Ellen, you're brave to do the things you do. Anyway, now Ellen's out. She should probably take a deep breath and relax and not force any next steps because that's a pretty... Oh, oh no, I guess we're racing ahead to step six, telling the people in your life. I know what you need. A melon baller. I'm gay. <laughs> That's the fabulous Patrick Bristow as Peter. I could just watch his reaction here over and over. He's the greatest. And by the way, he's going to be my guest on this week's episode of my podcast, The Sewers of Paris. Anyway, six minutes later, Ellen's fully out to her friends. Are you sure this is what you want? Aren't you sweet? Yes, I am sure. Thank you. Okay. Everybody pay up. Damn! <laughs> Okay, she's gone from the closet to fully out in about three days. Now, I know you're exhausted, Ellen, but at some point, you're going to have to drag yourself to step seven, your first heartbreak. And it's going to be tough, and there's no need to rush, or, or you could do it right now. I'm in an eight-year relationship. Eight years, boy. <laughs> so it must be getting pretty serious. <laughs> Oof, sorry, Ellen. Now that you've been an out lesbian for four days, this might be a good time to move to step eight, exploring lesbian culture. 
Well, I do have to hand it to you for finding the lesbianist coffee house in Los Angeles. Man, I miss the 90s. Anyway, let's see. In the span of a 45-ish minute episode spanning four days, you developed lesbian rapport, tried to turn yourself straight, developed a crush, came out to yourself, confided in someone you trust, came out to your friends, had your heart broken, and started exploring the community. Man, that was efficient. But I could have sworn there was a ninth step. What was that? And sign here. Wow, I didn't know it was so complicated. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Susan. There's a toast Oh, thank you so much. Ah yes, we've reached the finish line and here's our prize. And now you know why all the finest lesbian homes are full of toaster ovens. Everyone's coming out is different, but this exhausting sprint was a warp speed microcosm of some of the major milestones. 42 million people watched this episode. That's 15% of the country who saw what it's like to come out, many of whom probably never even thought about it before. This episode's like a race, but it also taught some of those 42 million spectators how they could safely run it themselves or how to cheer on a runner they care about. And hopefully, it showed some other folks who didn't support the race before that it's not as scary as they might have thought. Thanks for watching. And by the way, as I mentioned, this episode features Patrick Bristow as Ellen's gay friend, Peter. He was an openly gay character in a relationship on television when there were very few other characters like him. I interviewed Patrick this week on my podcast, The Sewers of Paris, and we talked all about his role in this episode, in the movie Showgirls, and as a member of The Groundlings. You can listen to the episode at sewersofparis.com and subscribe there as well. It's episode 28, featuring Patrick Bristow. As always, let me know your thoughts. You can leave a comment or tweet at me, at Matt Baum on Twitter. And remember to subscribe for more videos. Now, if you'll excuse me, my toast is ready. I'm gay.